permutation locks and combinations. And you're like, what do you mean permutation locks? Well, let me go through it. This, everyone thinks of as a combination lock, and that's what it's called. But math nerds are like, hey, 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 that's kind of wrong. It's really a permutation lock. That's why we call it permutation locks and combinations. The difference is because order matters. If your code is one, seven, four, in order for this guy to open, and you put those numbers in a different order, it will not open. Why? Because order matters, which means that it's, in math nerd terms, a permutation lock. So sometimes when I see one of these with the name combination, lock at the hardware store or wherever I'm like under my breath heh 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 permutation lock it's a nice nerd moment you might want to do it or maybe not anyway let's get started question one how many ways can you arrange Amy Beth Carla Dion and Elizabeth in a line okay so this is your classic permutation question order matters right how many different ways so this is a permutation question because order matters and the classic answer is well how many choices do you have for the first one how many choices do you have for the second one how many choices do you have for the third one how many choices do you have for the fourth one and how many choices do you have for the fifth one well if you choose one of these guys or ladies to sit here so so how many do you have? You have five choices. Okay, so how many goes here? How many choices do you have? Well, if you already put somebody in the first seat, you only have four choices left. And if you already put somebody, two people in the first two seats, well, there's only three left, then two left, then one left. So the answer is A, otherwise known as five factorial, which we'll get to later, but we're good to go. Question two, how many ways can you arrange Amy, Beth, Carla, Dion, and Elizabeth, hi friends, at a circular table with five seats? And you're like, we just did this problem, but here's the difficulty. In a straight line, the first person matters, right? Because in this straight line, A is sitting um, by uh, his self, herself on the end. And then you flip everyone down one, right? You flip everyone down one and look, now B, who used to be in the middle, now is at the end and A is next to E. And you're like, oh, that's different. So that's a different order. But what happens when we have a circular table? A circular table, if you switch everybody, you know, plop one space over, well, A is still next to E and B, A is still next to E and B, and you know, it's all the same. So they're considered the same. I know what you're saying. What if there's a window down here and there are the exit and they're all, it's not exactly the same, but in math terms, or if it's on the SHSAT, the term circular table will mean that you have to do something different in order to get the right answer. So if they're in a straight line, if they're in a straight line, it would be n factorial, right? And you'd have five factorial, that was the last problem. If it's in a circular table, it's n minus one factorial. Because you think about it, all we have to do is we have to eliminate the, eliminate the one change, which isn't really a change. So you eliminate the one change, which really isn't a change. That's why it's n minus one factorial. Just go with it, it'll be okay. The answer is C, we're good to go. Question three, how many ways can you select a president, secretary, and treasurer from a group of 10 students? Okay, so this is again a classic permutation question because order matters. It matters who the president is, who the secretary is, and who the treasurer is. Well, how many choices do you have for president? You have 10 choices for president. How many choices do you have for secretary? And you're like, 10. No, but it's not 10, right? Because you already chose a person for president. So that person out of the group of 10 is off the list because you can't have one person be both president and secretary in these types of problems. So that would be 10 times nine because you already have one person as president, nine for secretary, and then you can just follow along. It'll be two gone, so eight for treasurer. And these are your number of choices. It's 10 times nine times eight. And we're good. Question four, how many ways can you select a committee of three students from a group of 100 students? And now we have changed from permutation to combination. Why? Because order doesn't matter. Well, let me show you. If you had president, secretary, and treasurer, that would be 100 times 99 times 98, which was the last problem, right? Because order matters. Because it matters who the president is, who the secretary is, and who the treasurer is. For example, if you had one person whose initials were AA, and they were presidents, and another person whose initials were BB and they were secretary, and another person whose initials were CC and they were treasurer, well, that situation would be different than if you had BB as secretary, A, I'm sorry, BB as president, AA as secretary, and CC 
as treasure. Get it? These are different. These are different. But it would be the same if they're all just committee members, right? If they're all just committee members, then A, A, B, B, C, C is the same as B, B, A, A, C, C, right? They're the same if they're all just committee members. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, let's start with where we started for with, you know, the last time. Let's just say that the number of choices is going to be 100 times 99 times 98. And that makes sense, right? Because if you have 100 choices, well, who gets the first seat? You know, have 100 choices. Who gets the second seat? You get 99 choices. Who gets the third seat? You get 98 choices. Okay, but what do we have to divide that by? How many sames are there gonna be? How many sames are there gonna be? Well, if you have three seats, you're gonna have three factorial as the sames. You think about it, you know, if we say this is committee one, committee two, committee three, well, you could have, um, you could have one, two, three, you could have one, three, two, you could have two, one, three, you could have two, three, one, you could have three, one, two, you could have three, two, one. There are six choices. It's three factorial because there are three seats, throw the factorial next to it, and remember three factorial equals three times two times one. That's what you gotta know, that's what you gotta remember, that's the rule, and the answer is A. Question five, you have a model train with three cars. You have 10 different kinds of paint, you, but you don't want to paint any car the same color as the car immediately next to it. How many ways can you paint your train? This is an awesome question because it takes permutation and combination logic and it kind of extends it forward. And it's a question I got wrong the first time I did it. Okay, so you have three cars. How many choices do you have for the first car? Well, you have 10 choices, right? Because you have 10 different kinds of paint. How many choices do you have for the second car? You have nine choices, right? How many choices do you have for the third car? Well, you're like, you should have 10 because you only use nine, so it might be 10 choices, but really you only have nine again. Because whatever color you painted this car, you can't paint the next car the same color. And thought of it in that terms, I think it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I understand if you feel compelled to say, well, there's 10 choices because you only have nine choices here, but there really isn't. If you think about it in practical terms, if you paint this guy purple, you can't paint this guy purple. So there's only nine choices even if you have 10 colors of paint in your paint box. Okay, so if you can think about it this way, if you paint the middle one first, you have 10 choices and you have nine choices on either side. In any way, there's gonna be two nines and one 10. Two nines and one 10 is C. And we're good to go. Question six, okay, now that we know what we're doing, let's rock and roll here. How many ways can you arrange Leo, Mia, Nancy, and Omar? So four people in a line? Well, that's gonna be four factorial, right? Cause you have one, two, three, four. So you have four choices for the first one, three choices for the second one, two choices for the third one, and one choice for the last one. So that is four factorial, they're the same thing. Four times three is 12, times two is 24, 24 times one is 24. We're good to go. Question seven, a company is making identification codes for its employees. Each employee will receive a code in which a letter A through Z is followed by a digit zero through nine, which is followed by either a letter or a number. How many different codes are possible? Well, how many letters are there? You have 26 choices for the first item in the code. How many numbers are there? It's zero through nine, so you have 10 different choices for your uh, digit or your number place. And then letter or number, well, I mean, there's 26 letters and there's 10 numbers, so there's 36 letters or numbers. So you have those three numbers, how do you put them together? Well, you just multiply them. We're good. Question eight, how many distinct ways can you order the letters sassy? Okay, so you gotta see right away that it doesn't matter which S you put in which space, they're all gonna be the same. So if you have sassy spelled this way with this S first, it's the same as if you spelled it with this S first. Okay, so there's gonna be some duplications that we have to remove. All right, so how many choices do we have in the first instance? Five letters. So we have five choices here, four choices here, three choices here, two choices here, and one choice here, otherwise known as five factorial. And how many sames do we have to take away, right? How we have to divide by how many sames. We know if there's this S switched with this S, it's the same, so we have to take it away. Well, there's going to be, this is the rule, three factorial of sames. So how do we know it's three factorial? Well, there's three S's. So we don't have to do the math here because our answers are just that simple and we're good to go. 
Question nine, how many distinct ways can you order the letters class? Okay, so let's go through this. There's gonna be some duplicates because we, it doesn't matter which S comes first, but let's go through it. So first we're gonna have, you know, our classic five factorial because we have five letters to begin with. So that's five times four times three times two times one. And we have to divide that by the number of duplicates, which is two factorial, which just equals two, be, or, you know, just equals two because two times one is two. Okay. So there we go. If we have it like this and we're like, okay, we gotta divide the whole thing by two, we can just take out those twos now because that's the way multiplication and division works, right? And we multiply five times four, which is 20 times three, which is 60. And we're good. Question 10, how many ways can you select a committee of three students from a group of 10 students? Okay, so this is a committee, this is a combination, order doesn't matter. If we have, you know, this is the whole A, A, B, B, and C, C is gonna be the same as C, C, B, B, A, A, right? Because they're all just committee members. So how many choices do we have for the first spot? We have 100. How many choices do we have for the second spot? 99, how, ooh, no, I'm sorry, it's 10, let me start over. Question 10, how many ways can you select a committee of three students from a group of 10 students? Okay, so this is your classic uh, combination pattern, which means you're gonna have duplicates. Because if they're all just committee members, remember A, A, B, B, C, C will be the same as C, C, B, B, A, A. It'll be a duplicate, right? Because they all just get committee spots. It doesn't matter who's first, who's second, who's third. It's not like uh, assigning president, secretary, and treasurer. Okay, so what's our rule? Well, first we're gonna have how many choices do we have? And that's 10 times nine times eight. And we gotta divide that by the number of sames. And the number of sames is three factorial, right? Three factorial, because we're gonna have three choices of committee seats, so it's three factorial that we have to divide by. Three factorial is three times two times one. And what does this all come out to? This is just a big long division problem. I'm going to do some math here by taking nine divided by three and turning it into three, four divided by two and turning it into four, and that's an easy way to do these problems rather than just multiplying everything out and dividing everything out. It's simpler if you do the division in the first instance. Three times two is 12 times 10 is 120. And we're good. All right, here's a little bit of a bonus lesson because you went through all that time and struggle trying to figure out permutations and combinations, so I might as well just introduce you to the formal notation. Okay, this is permutations. You can tell it's permutation because there's a big P. Then you go parentheses n of r equals n factorial over n minus r all factorial. And you're like, what does that mean? Well, we already know what that means, and I'll prove it to you here. How many ways to get a president, secretary, and treasurer out of 10 students? So we did this problem, and you can be successful. The way I did it was I just said, well, let's do 10 times 9 times 8, because there's 10 choices for the president nine for the secretary and eight for the treasurer. But you can do it with N as your set, so then you have 10 factorial, because that's your set, N, you have 10 students, over 10 minus three factorial. That equals 10 factorial over seven factorial. This might go too quick for you, but I promise you it's not that difficult and you can get it. Just think about it this way. 10 times nine times eight is 720, but you can also do it as 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, which is 10 factorial divided by seven factorial. See what that does? Seven divided by seven is zero is one, six divided by six is one, five divided by five is one, and so on. So what you have left after all this cancels out and just becomes one giant one is 10 times nine times eight. I think my way is a lot simpler, and I think when you know my way, you can kind of derive the other formal notation from it, but I wanted to introduce you to that for permutations. Okay, same thing for combinations. Combinations is a big C, then a parentheses, then N, R, and N is your set, and R is your subset. And we have the same thing as we had for permutations, but then we have an extra R factorial. We have an extra R factorial because you have to divide out the number of sames. We did this, I know we did this, you are successful at this, you can do this. So how many ways are there to get three committee members out of 10 students? Well, we know what to do, right? We can do it the first way, which is 10 times nine times eight, uh, and then divide by three factorial, right? And that's the same as 10 factorial over uh, 10 minus three or seven factorial, which is the exact same thing for the permutations. This is the exact same thing for the permutations. 
For the combinations, you just add the R factorial. And why do you have to add the R factorial? Because you have to take out the number of sames. So think about it this way, you know, you just do 10 times nine times eight divided by six and you get 120, or you can do this whole thing and get the same answer. Again, I think my way is simpler, but if you ever run into this later in life, now you know what it looks like. We're good.